think for me, the idea of uh, luxury is really to give a service. For a family business like Patek Philippe, we believe that our watch should last forever. I have seen too many sad uh, stories about watches who have been repairing outside the Patek Philippe authorized uh, retailer's network. This is a high level watches. The parts who are inside, for just for a simple movement, we're already talking about 150 parts minimum. Those parts are very difficult. It took us minimum five years, for example, just to make a simple movement at Patek. This is why we really insist that the customer is going back to an official Patek Philippe retailer because he will take care about the watch the way we think it's the best for the watch. It's about training, it's about years of experience. The best watchmaker for the after sale service, he is able to see the whole history of the watches. That means he is able to fix a watch who is a minute repeater of today, but he is also able to fix a watch who is a minute repeater from the beginning. For the old watches, after 30 years, some parts we have to redo them. They don't exist anymore. We have the tools, we have the knowledge, we have the people, and they can restart from scratch uh, any will. And this is also the beauty of the watchmaker here. This is not something that you will learn in the books. You need to be part of the Patek Philippe family to be able to handle our watches. This is a know-how that we have since 1839. If you want to keep your watch, keep it accurate, keep it beautiful. We are asking to our customer to come back, maybe every five years, to clean their watches so I can re-oil them and they can be ready for another five years. Within the last two years, we have more and more watches which come from the customer for the restoration in different statues. Sometimes watches are completely destroyed and Patek Philippe is able today to remake spare parts to refurbish completely the watch. The spare parts which have been used by the service is produced directly in the production area. That is the reason we are able to ensure that the quality of the production, but also at the service side, will be completely the same. Even for the machinery, today we are using tools which were used in the beginning of the last century, which is not produced anymore and we are able with some watchmaker to do intervention which is not possible to do with new machine. I have a watchmaker who is doing pivoting and he is able to remake a complete balanced staff and the thickness of one of the pivot is less than one hair which is not achievable with very modern machines. Even the watchmaking school today are not training young people to do this kind of job. This is also a commitment of Patek Philippe to really ensure that those craftsmanship will still be following, I will say, the next generation. The watchmaker begins the dismantling process by removing the movement from the case. He then carries out a diagnostic test to check its accuracy. A mechanical movement contains between 150 and 350 individual parts, depending on its complexity. Dismantling it typically takes one to two hours, during which the watchmaker must diagnose any potential damage that needs addressing. The watch is taken apart, and the main organs of the movement are all checked. These are the motor organ, the distribution, the regulation and transmission. The watchmaker identifies the condition of the components. 
Diagnostics is an important skill requiring many years of experience, intuition and a vivid understanding of micro-mechanics. Carefully examining each component is vital to completing a proper service or repair. During a repair service, around 10 pieces are systematically replaced. These are parts that are extensively used and subject to wear and tear. Once dismantled, the components are taken to be cleaned. Special liquids and ultrasound remove any traces of old lubricants or residues. When the cleaning cycle is complete, the watchmaker begins the reassembly. For a simple mechanical movement, this usually takes between five and eight hours. Hundreds of different mounting procedures must be observed. All the components are reinstated to their respective places and in the correct order. Adjustments are made between the components to ensure proper function and timing. During reassembly, the movement is re-oiled. Most components within a watch require lubrication to guarantee proper functionality and wear resistance. Typically, there are up to 150 oiling points in a mechanical movement. Applying the lubricant in the prescribed amount at the exact point of need is a skill of great importance. If too much oil is used, it can spread to where it isn't required, creating a void where it is needed, resulting in wear and tear, and eventually failure. Finally, the watchmaker places the dial on the movement while checking the play of the moving parts, the space between the dial and the gear trains which is necessary for smooth operation. The hands are driven into the arbors and the watchmaker checks the functions. Before the movement is cased up, the accuracy rate is adjusted and checked in six different positions, corresponding to the most common positions of the watch and the Patek Philippe quality control criteria. Before it is polished, the case is dismantled and taken to be washed. Throughout the polishing process, the case is washed three to four times after each jewellery, polish or rhodium plating operation. The 45-minute wash cycle is an integral element to the polishing process. It cleans the parts and, importantly, removes any residue. All polishing is carried out only at the request of the owner. Often marks and scratches become a part of the watch's character and hold sentimental value. If the owner wishes for these to be kept, this will of course be ensured. Traditional polishing uses discs coated with an abrasive paste. The disc may be made of fabric, felt, natural or synthetic hair, depending on the desired effect. The form of the disc is adapted to the operations that need to be performed on the case. Polishing is performed by hand and is free-floating, meaning without pressure, a particularly difficult polishing technique which requires experience to master. Satin finishing uses plates covered in very fine emery paper discs. This is specifically used to refurbish the case back. Emery stick polishing uses a wooden batten, again covered with extremely fine emery paper. The use of the stick is adapted depending on requirements. It is used both for the bezel and for the case back. In extreme circumstances, the case may require major intervention by the jeweler, such as replacing a lug or rectifying deep damage. 
Laser soldering is used to reattach exterior case components and fill any deep imperfections that are not rectifiable by polishing. Diamond polishing is used only rarely and restores a mirror finish to case surfaces, which traditional cloth polishing wheels are not suitable for. First, the case fitter measures the dimensions of the case to ensure this operation can be completed. A diamond-tipped cutting tool attached to a special lathe is then used to gently remove minuscule amounts of case material. It is a specific operation used on the edges that retains the angles and the original shape of the case. Rhodium plating involves coating with a fine layer of rhodium by electrolysis. The metal is often used to give a beautiful colour to white gold or for certain movement parts. After polishing, the glass is fitted on the case. It is placed into a polymerization compartment to fix the glue. Excess glue is carefully removed and the case is again placed in the polymerization compartment, this time to harden the glue. New gaskets are fitted. The case back and crown are reassembled. Waterproof watches are tested for water resistance. A final aesthetic control is then completed before the case is returned to the watchmaker. The final assembly of the movement is undertaken in a clean or dust-free environment called a laminar flow. The movement is working during this recasing process. The watchmaker replaces the rotor. The inside of the front of the case is cleaned before the movement is put back in. He replaces and repositions the crown using a touch of silicon that improves the crown functionality. Final traces of particles are removed from the case and it is partially closed. The piece is then heated slightly to remove any humidity that may have accumulated. The case back is then definitively closed. The case up movement is again tested for rate accuracy in adherence with accepted tolerance levels before being taken to the final quality control area. The quality control ratifies the tests previously performed by each specialist. 
The final control process lasts 14 working days and consists of a series of tests to verify the aesthetics and functional controls, self-winding speed, power reserve, accuracy and water resistance. The self-winding speed test verifies the winding capacity of a self-winding movement within a defined time. The test for rate accuracy measures the amplitude of the balance after complete winding at zero hours and then 24 hours later. Power reserve control measures the total running time of a timepiece between the moments when it is fully wound to when it stops. If the timepiece is still running after the defined power reserve test period, it moves on to the next test. Kinetic simulation aims to simulate the movement on a customer's wrist. Various dynamic and static observations are conducted over a 48-hour period. Water resistance control is performed only on watches that are guaranteed to be water resistant. They are tested by means of leak flow rate test. The watch is placed in a pressurized cavity for around 30 seconds. If no air seeps into the watch, the test is passed. After successfully completing all the tests, the most severe in the Swiss watch industry, the watch undergoes a final visual inspection, a check of its functions, and is set to time. The bracelet is reattached and the watch placed into vacuum packaging, ready to be returned to its owner.